All right. In this class, I uh, want to start talking about uh, inverse kinematics. So inverse kinematics are um, essentially, I'll, I'll explain it with a rig pose a little bit. So for a rig pose, you, you have forward kinematics, which is where it basically goes forward down the hierarchy. Um, and that's what determines where these joints end up. So if I rotate this, it's going to rotate everything around this joint. And I can keep going and it'll essentially basically be kind of just like a, a like a robot kind of like a, it, it, one thing affects the next thing. Whereas inverse kinematics, um, and I'll show a better example of this soon, but uh, would be if I was to move this joint. So if I was to move this out here and everything else um, that needed to move to get this joint here would move accordingly. Um, and obviously the rig pose is FK, so we don't want to, I mean, that's, that's not going to do it. But inverse kinematics is essentially setting a goal and then setting a start point. And you can have like a twist effector and stuff. But I'll show you, I'll show you how, how we set this up uh, right now. So I'll dive into full body, uh, the full body kinematics node. In the next video, this one is, is just showing how to set up uh, inverse kinematics, which the full body inverse kinematics solver is great, but it doesn't work perfect for everything. Um, especially, I like to do my arms as just their own thing. So I'll show you how we do that uh, right now. All right, so the first thing we're going to need to do inverse kinematics is um, we hit tab and we go just type IK. We'll find this controller called uh, IK chains, and it's going to require a skeleton and the IK drivers. And I'll show you what those are in a second. Um, so we have this base mesh again with our bone deform. Um, this guy just plugged in uh, to our FBX model, and we're going to create a rig pose. But actually, we're not going to want to do that yet. We're going to. You can use a blast node. Or there's actually a uh, delete joints node. I feel like delete joints is probably what you should be using, but I don't notice a difference, and I almost feel like blast is faster. I need to do a quick test of that, but um, I'm not positive. I'll, I'm just going to use blast for right now to show you that you can manipulate skeletons basically just like any other um, kind of uh, mesh. Is this what I have going? Oh, yeah, no, okay. Yeah, I'm an idiot. So gonna just space G to center um, this and then in the blast I am going to go points and I'm gonna go delete non-selected and what I want to delete here is I, I basically want to isolate um, what's gonna be driving this IK so I want to isolate the shoulder the forearm like the, the elbow and the um, hand. Okay, and so I got this now. And now I don't want these to still be parented. So you'll see I, I have these three joints and if I throw down a rig pose right now, you'll see that this is still rotating the rest of these guys. Or if I move this, it's going to move everything down the chain still. And I don't want that, I actually want none of them to be parented at all. Um, so I'm going to drop down an add sop. And I'm going to delete jump geometry, but keep the points. So you'll see we don't have these uh, edges anymore, but we still have these points. And now if I move these around, it uh, nothing's parented. The hierarchy is basically just flat. So uh, each of these can be controlled in their own space. Okay, so now that we have this set up, this section here, I'll color these black because you don't really need to worry about these too much. Um, so essentially just delete the driver points, which um, for IK you want your uh, basically the source. So like for arms, you'd want like the top of the arm and then you'd want the middle. So like the elbow and then you want the, the hand joint. And then for legs, you get like the top of the leg, the knee joint and the foot joint. Um, so that's kind of how you you drive that and I'll just I'll leave this as rig pose because why not 
Okay, and so just because I like to keep things kind of neat in here, I'm going to put this into a null, and I'm just going to call this null input. And then I'm going to take the skeleton, which goes into the input, which is just our, our base skeleton. And then the drivers go into the second input, which is called IK drivers. All right, so we'll plug this in. And then we'll turn off this point displays. And then if we start moving this around, you'll see nothing's really happening. So we, have, we haven't really done anything yet. You, you still have another step you have to do to set this up. So if we hop into the IK chains, you have to hit this plus button. And here's where we're going to set up the in-risk kinematics. So we want to hit this little uh, selection icon. And then we want the root. So our root is going to be the upper part of the arm because that's we don't care about the inverse kinematics after that. And then the middle name is going to be this joint. The tip name is going to be this joint. Okay, and now in this, this is where we set the goals and the twist effector. So the goal is going to be the end. So the goal is going to be the tip. And then the twist effector, or the twist name, is going to be our middle. So that'll be the elbow. And now one other thing that's really annoying is they don't set this by default, but the blend has to be on one, or you're not. It's just gonna send everything in here. It kind of has like a built-in little skeleton blend, which I think is annoying. But now that we have this set up, everything's set to one. Um, we can move this, and you'll start to notice that we have these kind of backwards like controls where the elbow um, this is the elbow joint controls where uh, where the elbow like it's basically trying to point that joint uh, towards this point uh, if that makes any sense uh, like the elbows up vector I guess is this joint and then you have your hand which uh, kind of controls the whole little setup of it. So, yeah. One thing about this is if you get the elbow joint too close, uh, it's it's going to have a lot of issues. So I actually usually like to back the elbow joint up um, from the get-go just because you want it to be behind. And sometimes I'll even reparent the, the elbow joint to the hand, and I'll show you that in a second. But we have a few more controls we can get in here. And if you want, say, when I'm rotating this, you'll you notice the hand doesn't rotate at all, um, which a lot of time is probably how I would like to edit because um, I don't want to have to adjust the hand to match the the arm whenever I rotate this thing. But if if you did want that, you could go orientate tip, and then try to figure this out. Go ahead and move this back because why not? And then I start rotating this. You'll see that I can actually rotate the hand. But the problem with this that I don't like is that say I move this guy in and down or something. You'll see I have to continuously rotate this hand to kind of match um, where I'm positioning the, the hand joint. So it can just get a little annoying and a little wacky if I'm doing a lot of animation. Um, I typically like to just animate the hand uh, positions later, unless unless I'm doing something where like uh, he's gripping something or, or I want that the hand rotation to stay the same uh, as the arm moves. Um, so there, there are uses for this. Um, don't don't think that you just should cross it out if you mind. Um, but typically, I'll, I'll I'll leave this orient tip off. <laughs> I almost never want to do stretching. Stretching is going to stretch the actual skeleton. So uh, with stretching on, <laughs> do this kind of elastic look. Uh, with it off, it's just going to try its best to get to this position. Uh, and if it can't, then it's not going to stretch the skeleton. It's just going to... Uh, Go as far as it can go. All right, so one thing I like to do is after I delete this connection, 
I like to actually reparent it, but I kind of reparent it in the opposite way. So by the opposite way, I mean, uh, typically in this setup, we would want uh, the elbow to wherever the elbow is. We have the arm control this and then uh, the hand be parented to the elbow. So hand parents to elbow, elbow parented to upper arm. Um, and we'd have this kind of hierarchy going. So sometimes for IK, uh, I can get away with only even controlling the, the hand joint, really. Uh, so what we do for this is we'd go in here, and for the joint, we want to select our elbow joint. And then for the parent, we want to parent it actually to the hand joint. So the elbow will be moving based off of our uh, rotations and changes to the hand joint actually so move stuff like this and I'm actually I'm gonna move this back um, let's just say move this back minus five um, just so it's not right on the joint all right and so because of this now when we rotate this joint our move this thing down or, or, or kind of move around this uh, this hand, this elbow joint moves with it. And we can actually kind of orientate where the elbow is just based off of uh, how we, we move this hand around, which is really nice sometimes not having to jump between, uh, like jumping back and forth. And we can still jump back and animate this. Um, this elbow joint itself. Uh, so I like this workflow sometimes. Um, it's not always ideal because, again, you're always going to be controlling this basically no matter what. Um, but yeah, that's essentially uh, the gist of, um, of IK chains. So this setup, and then you'd want to do. Um, so, so for for doing everything, you can run all like your legs and your arms through all through one, uh, IK joint. So if I go to this blast node, all we do is essentially just isolate. I actually don't think we need the tops. I think we really just need the twists and the base or the 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 tip, uh, joints. And then if we go there, let me add. I'm gonna delete this reparent and clear out this rig pose. Yeah, we don't need that. We actually, we actually probably don't want the um, an effector because we're actually just going to be selecting the root based off of the, the first um, joint. So basically, so we go and we hit the plus button on this IK chains. And let's just go ahead and select uh, this guy and then with name, select this guys. So that's our left arm is done. And now we'll hit plus, we'll add a third one. Let's do the uh, left leg. So root, oh, it's like sometimes it can affect, have some bugs. So we'll go root, middle, and tip. And then we'll go left leg. So we'll go twist, goal, and again, we're just selecting now these um, uh, our blasted um, joints. So, so last one, temp, and then we can honestly on these also. If you don't want to do these extra little selecting them, we can just match by name um, because this is all the same skeleton. I don't like to do that just because I I feel like. It's gonna. That's a bad habit to to get into, and I mean it's gonna work a hundred percent for for this skeleton, um, but I feel like eventually if I if I, you know, it's gonna give me uh, it's gonna cause up a, a, a headache in the future on something not working. So I'm uh, I usually just like to just go ahead and just select the the joints. But okay, um, so. I have the blends set to one on all of these, which is, you just got to make sure you have that because it, it won't work otherwise. And then let's just start controlling these. So you'll see 
I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to push these knees out. Because again, uh, that's not something we want. So we can now move the leg like an actual leg would. And we can uh, use the twist effector to basically locate where we want the knee to be looking at. And all of these are now controlled on this single rig pose right here. Um, so we actually we don't control anything with the the IK change node. We just basically set that up to tell uh, Houdini how to set up the constraints. And, uh, and that's the gist of um, that's the gist of this. So yeah, thank you for watching, and uh, we'll continue on with more KinFX stuff in the next class.